Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast. My hype. This is episode 145. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. We brought the nigga right back for you. This is how special he was the last time. He might be back next week. Reintroduce yourself to the audience. New listeners every day, baby. What's, what's going on, people? This is Tone, aka Tone, the promoter here. Copy that. Tone put something out there in the last episode. Uh, that he was on, which was 143, available still. You go back, five stars only. Leave your reviews. Let us know what you thought. Um, we only accept five, not four stars, though. But Tone said something in the Get to Know segment that sparked something for me. I've been working on this one and trying to make this one happen, scheduling conflicts and all of that. Things work out when they work out. Autism is something that I wanted to shine a light on. Uh, a lot of parents deal with autistic children. I haven't myself personally, but if you ever run into me, I got the joint on my arm. That's my niece. So I know like how them situations are. I know that there's a topic that we can tackle because a lot of people can relate to this. Joint. Tone threw that out there and I told him you put a pin in that and we're going to pull that pin. This is the poll. Tone, you said your son was 12. Talk to us about talk to us about uh, the struggle of dealing with the uh, the struggle dealing with your son, as you said, he was non—he was non-verbal until he was like ten, I believe you said, correct? Yeah, yeah. People can so, hear you on the audio if, you, if you're not in tone. <laughs> say, I'm sorry, say this again. I I said people can't hear you nodding on the audio tone. <laughs> All right, right. <laughs> All right, so so go ahead though. You, yeah. All right, so lay that out for us. Go ahead. At the at the age at the all right, so my son for for one, he started off, he started walking at a at a uh, like a late age. Like he started walking at like one, you know what I mean? Um taking him steps uh at, at the age of one. So then when he he does that, um uh, once he gets a little bit older, you know, one thing with kids um that we all deal with as they little, you know, putting things in their mouth, you know what I mean? So you have to teach them obviously not to do that. Um, but he was just getting obviously to that age where, you know, we, he was t- telling him, you know, not to do it, but he just kept doing it. Like, it was just like, he, it, it was something that I guess he just couldn't grasp at the time. Like, I ain't supposed to do this. Like, you know what I mean? So we had to really, you know what I mean, watch him, uh, you know, we'll keep a uh, close eye on him. And then it was just as if, like, once he was like two years old and, you know, once you give a kid blocks, they normally stack the blocks or, you know, you give them some paper, maybe they might try to scribble, write a name, or just, you know what I mean, emulate things that, you know, when kids get older, you know what I mean, that's what they would do. And, like, again, I just go back to it, it. He just wanted to put everything in his mouth. And, and then one thing is just, he just wasn't talking. You know, just wasn't saying dada, wasn't saying mama. Yeah, you know, nothing. He, he was giving us nothing. He wouldn't even really, like, too much make noise, but it was just, it was just nothing. Like, I know at the beginning, me, me and his mom had kind of thought, like, maybe he was deaf, you know what I mean? Because, he wasn't talking. He no sound, so he wasn't giving none of that feedback. Yeah. 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 Right. So, um, so what we did was we took him to like a hearing doctor. You know what I mean? Just to see if if he you know was deaf. And and they had he sat us in a room and had four speakers on you know each corner of the wall, and they would say his name. He wasn't really too you know too fine. Maybe I guess I could even say of his name. So when they called his name, that wasn't really working. But one thing that he still that he loves. When he was a kid and to this day is Barney. So if you put Barney on, you know what I mean? If, if we like had his phone that he that he has and we play Barney somewhere in another room, he's turning, he's coming in that room, you know, to get that phone to hear Barney. So we know he could hear. So then it's just like, all right, so what's the next step? And then he's like, all right, so well, maybe we just want to have like a, uh, you know, a therapist, like a, a doctor that, that uh, evaluates children to sit with him. And it's just to evaluate them, have them in a room with kids, you know, toys and blocks books and things like that and then you know just from her assumption uh i mean it's not assumption but her um observation of him that was when it was just like diagnosed like okay he, he could be on a spectrum and you know what i mean and uh then they diagnosed him with, with autism and um you know they the one thing that I, I remember at the beginning was that they told us how okay. was, was that let me jump in right here how old was he when he got diagnosed? 
We didn't, nah, so how we didn't old was he? Um, he was he was like yes. I want to say two, maybe almost three. All right, so one, I commend y'all for this is the part that we this is the one of the problems that we have with these situations is people are sitting there yelling at that baby for years, not wanting to admit that there could be a problem. Our problem is we all be thinking that we're special and it can't happen to me, it can't happen to mine, right. that's my son, right. that's my daughter. Right. So that ain't never what this is. He just don't want to listen, or he just bad, or she just bad. And I commend mm -hmm. y'all for saying. Something ain't right. Man. Let's try to do something about it instead of just banging your heads against the wall, just assuming that y'all got to be special and that you didn't have or you couldn't have had an issue because it's your baby. So salute to right. y'all for that. Again, that goes back to the episode that we just did about saying those things out loud. Let's not just gloss over that because plenty of people will wait 10, 12 years and say, all right, now something got to be wrong because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 10 years later when you was in denial at that time. Right, right, right. Then, it, then it's like you way behind an eight ball, you know, at that point, like, you know what I mean, or trying to get them, you know, up to speed with things, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so, yeah, now you were saying after uh, it took him in to the doctor and he's interacting with the kids and the books and all of that. Now, go ahead and meet us there. Right, so, like I said, then they, then they diagnosed him with autism and, then, you know, of course, we were home and, oh, I'm sorry, the doctor told us that every case of autism could be different. You know what I mean? Um, some kids do certain things, uh, you know, the nonverbal they do, you know, some a lot tend to do start talking, some don't. So it was just like, you know, cause we had all those questions, like, will, we, will he ever talk? Will he ever be able to understand? You know what I mean? Things like that. And it was just like, they couldn't really give us an answer because of the reason of every case could be different. So it was just as if I was just like, okay, all right, well, you know, my mission is to one day, you know what I mean, help my son talk. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, all right, so I'm not going to just sit here and take y'all word for that. If y'all tell me it's a chance, then that means I'm going to do the work. I'm going to put in, you know, to get those resources. You know what I mean? Help him out when he comes home. Speak to him. I, I talk to my son. You know what I mean? Like, even though I know he can't really, you know, give, give it to me back like that, I still talk to him. I, I ask him questions. I, you know what I mean? Like, because, you know, like I said, at one, at one, one day, my son's going to talk. So, I'm just prepping, getting him ready, you know what I mean, and knowing how somebody's going to start talking to him, you know, once that happens. And, you know, like I said, they diagnosed him, and then, you know what I mean, his mom just, you know what I mean, yeah, it was emotional, you know what I mean, we we cried, and we just like, I was, you know, me being a, a, a guy and playing basketball, you know what I mean, that was one of the things, once I had my son, and he was, he's my only son, I'm like, ah, you know what I mean, ball court, we on the ball court, and raise him up, you just knew that, but God said, no, I got another plan for you and your son, you know what I mean? Maybe he put it in my my lap to be an advocate for, you know, the I main autism and and then how to deal with it because of my son case being so severe with him not being able to talk. Like that's 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 major. That's that's a that's a big that's the biggest obviously um issue with this that I that I deal with. When your son gets when y'all get that diagnosis, where where does your head go as the parent? I'm sorry, one more time. I see, when you get that diagnosis, where does your head instantly go as the parent? I know you said like it's emotional, obviously, because they hear and find out, all right, well, at least we know what's going on. Because it got to be scary to just be like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Your job, one, mm -hmm. when you have kids, is complete protection. And to know, like, I can't protect you from this because I don't know what's wrong. It's a horrible feeling. Uh, so when you first hear that, though, where does the, where does the parent's mind go? I was, I was just in, I, I didn't know, you know what I mean? Like, and, and to be honest with you, I, of course I heard about, I, I think I want to say I heard about like autism, but n n never did I educate myself on it because just to what you said in the opening, if it ain't, it won't apply to us, you don't really, you don't really worry about it or you don't really care too much about it. Like, and you like say, oh, it can't happen to me. So it was just, I, it was the unknown. You know, for me, it was just the unknown of what me and his mom were going to go through with him throughout the duration of his life, you know what I mean? Uh, given what the doctors told us, that he may not talk, he may talk, you know what I mean? He needs need special, you know, services and things like that. It was all obviously brand new, and it was it was just unknown for me at, at the beginning, you know what I mean? Like, like man, you know what I mean? He told me he can't talk, like, man, so how are we going to communicate? How he's going to tell me if he's sick? How he's going to tell me if his stomach hurts? Or, you know what I mean? Like anything, you know what I mean? Because, you know, we, we do have that issue sometimes where he just, he just start crying. He just start crying. I mean, crying for a while, and it's just he could just be sitting down, and it's just like I don't know. You know, he can't tell me, oh, dad, my, my, my 
I'm a, you know what I mean? So it's just like, you got to kind of gauge it. You got to, like I said, that's why I talk to him. You know what I mean? I try to like just ask him questions, even though I know he may not say, yeah, it's my leg or it's my arm, but I'm, I'm touching it. I'm asking him, you know what I mean? Does this hurt? Does it squeeze? You know what I mean? Just doing like there's certain things to try to let him know that I'm there for him trying to figure out why he's emotional. One of the things I always did with my kids was just talk to them. My mom always would be like, just talk to them. Even when they little, even when they babies, don't give them the goo-goos and gagas. And I'm not dead dad. It's not my name. <laughs> right. I mean, just interact with them and let them hear, letting them hear those things, letting them see those things, letting them feel those things. Again, putting putting it out there instead of just assuming that they know it just because they, they're your kid. They don't know any damn thing when they come out. And you got to instill all of that into them. So, yeah, you talking to him and is it here? Is it there? Like, come on, give it to me. Like, we out here doing a mm -hmm. hockey chant type drawing, but we're going to figure this out. <laughs> if that's what we got to do. We to be able to communicate with you. That's what we're going to do. And there's no, right. like, yeah. It's no, it's no, it's no measure that I won't go through to make sure that that happens. I know, like, um, parents that deal with these situations always salute them because they are traumatic they they're not, not traumatic but they're a trying situation it's a situation that you have to be built for it's one of them things you always you get things because you can handle it you got that because you can handle it somebody else didn't get it because they couldn't handle it and mm -hmm. once once you get past the oh my god how could this happen to me that's like you said it's my only son i'm already thinking like i'm working with his left hand he, mm -hmm. the baby be two months old and you already be like yeah, come on, yeah, right right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make sure your handles is tight Right, right, no, for sure. He can't do nothing but this. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is another one. Now, like you said, because I played ball, and obviously we all got delusions of grandeur about how my son will be the toughest young boy out there. Yeah. Once you get the realization that all right, he's not going to be able to be uh me 2.0, which is a thing that we always have to protect from being a parent, is I made this mistake, so I gotta make up for it with my kid. Because your kid can't be the mistakes that you made. The kid has to mm -hmm. be themselves. Right. Once you got this diagnosis, you, you see like, okay, this is going to be a completely different thing that I'm not even used to. I'm going to have to educate myself. What was that mental hurdle of like having to come with that realization of this is just going to be completely different than anything I was prepared for? It was just like that. I, when I obviously knew what we was facing and everything like that, I was just like, okay. You know what I mean? Obviously, like you said, the basketball thing is, is is out the window at this point. Um, so for me, it was just like whatever my son tends to love to do. You know what I mean? Whatever that thing is, I'm just like that's what I'm gonna focus on. You know what I mean? To having him do that. You know what I mean? To to excite him. To you know what I mean? That's that's what he loved to do. And and one of those things that I found out that he did love to do was actually jump on the trampoline. You know what I mean? And and I took him to Sky Zone. And I mean, I took him like. With, with, with fear of, you know what I mean, he, he ain't going to like this place, you know what I mean, um, he, he, he gets aggressive, you know what I mean, a lot of the times, so he might, um, you know I mean, he might act out, and I'm just thinking, like, you know what I mean, you know, so, you know I, for me, another learning curve was, was the embarrassment, you know what I mean, like, you thinking, uh, because you out, he acting up, people looking at you, you embarrassed, you know what I mean, like, uh, but I'm just like, yo, that's not going to stop me from taking my son outside, like, that's, that's the, again, a disservice to him. You know what I mean? That's I'm keeping insecurities because I'm worried about right with everybody else. Worried about like, that that's my son. Somebody else and not prioritizing your own son. Copy, yeah. Right. Love the right. Love. I love the. I love the self evaluation there to look at this situation and say, I'm killing myself and dem I'm demeaning my son for other people. That's right. not what we do. Right. So yeah, once I once I got over that man, you know what I mean like I said, took him out. He let that trampoline, man. Right? Jumping on that joint, like really. We just having having fun, laughing, and, and I'm just like, you know what? So, hey, bro, you come in the sky zone every week. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what you do. You can get this out. Go ahead, jump away, bro. See, this is the funny thing too about you always got to be intentional about the things that you ask for. You was asking for a son so he can get out there and hoop. Now he got all the hops in the world. Yeah, right. You got the aggression, like you said. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. He got them traits. He got them traits that you wanted. It's just in a different package. <laughs> right. So right. Then, you touched on this. I know we fast forward in a couple of years here, but you touched on this on episode one forty three was 
he say him uh, writing his name. How was how is before we even get there? Let's transition down into the going to school years, because mm -hmm. at two we still in the house all damn day. Maybe you go to daycare type joint, but even the daycare is like my aunt or my man got a daycare. Uh, cause right, right. We trust because like you stated again on that episode was he can't communicate to me. Mm -hmm. They gave me macaroni and I ain't like it. Or they somebody says something to me or treating me a certain way because kids are horrible. Right, um, right. How was that transition? Now we got to send you out into the world to go to school and it's like, and I'm not there because I got to go to work. What was that transition? Uh, it was hard, man. It was hard, very hard because I, I didn't want it. You know what I mean? I knew he had to go to school, obviously, you know what I mean, to get some learning, some helping, you know what I mean, to help him, you know, progress in life. And I had countless uh, amount of conversations with his mom, like, yo, you know, just, it was, it was, I'm telling you, one, one thing for me, man, it was that he couldn't talk. So I'm just like, yo, I don't know if I want to do this, man, because if, if they go to the school, and like I said, my son, he has a little aggression issue. So sometimes he might, you know what I mean, he might grab somebody or something like that. You know, if, if, if he, he don't just do it unintentionally, something has to spark him. So all I'm thinking, like, if that happened, and in the way a teacher or a student or somebody may react, we may never know, you know what I'm saying? Because they ain't going to tell us, and we can't, you know what I mean, even, unless it's obviously just that severe. So um, I, I was, like I said, I was, I was, uh, I was scared, man. I was, I was real scared of, of knowing that he had to, you know, get out there, and then I can't be there to protect him or save him from anything, like, in a physical, you know what I mean, standpoint. Um, so that was tough, but. And, and, and another thing, obviously, because he, he's a he's a the daddy's boy, you know what I'm saying? Boys just glued to my hip. Anytime I'm pulling up, I could just become a classic crib because his mom sell like uh, they sell cakes and, and, and food and stuff like that. So I might pull up and get a little flat platter. But he he going to go grab his sneakers, getting dressed like oh my daddy, I'm out. So that was one thing too. I was like, damn, is he going? Is he going to want to be in school? You know what I'm saying? Away from you know what I mean? What he's used to because one thing uh, with him, he's very routine, very routine guy. I mean, we even knows the way we go home. If I make a right when I'm supposed to make a left, he's grabbing me like, hey, where we going? You know what I'm saying? Like this ain't this ain't the normal way we supposed to get somewhere. Like nigga um, ain't supposed to be on Broad Street. We supposed right, to like, yeah. we turn at 15. What you doing? Right. right. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Um like I said, breaking that routine of him being home, going out into the school world, I was worried. But I mean we he, he's going to the seventh grade uh you know, next next school year, and um, he loves it, man. He loves it. He goes. I mean, he has his days, but but he he, he loves it, man. All right. So now, uh, like you said, now twelve years old, and uh, as twelve year old, we was both twelve, so you know what twelve mm -hmm. is like. Kids get a little. This one's starting to develop. That one ain't. So now mm -hmm. you got those type of situations. Uh, and now, like you say, you're still like not being able to verbalize things, can't be able to communicate those things that are going on in the classroom and in the school. That creates a whole different fear and a whole different hurdle to try to jump over. But like you said, he was able to get his name down. Yeah, gave him like you said, gave him a long joint, a couple of vowels, consonants, and all mm -hmm. that. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. But when you saw that. You said you talked about this. Uh, you talked about this in the last episode, but can you describe to us in a little more detail the feeling of the accomplishment that that was for him? You know, so for y'all, so not even just for him, because that's an accomplishment for y'all. Because it's mm -hmm. like we got to work with this, and we putting in this work. It's not just right. him. This is a this is a uh, a win for you and for his mom also. Right. So so. It'd be things that he'll come home and do that we didn't even know he can do. You know what I mean? And, and, and case in point was the ABCs, just ABCs. I'm going to just start there, like with the ABCs. Um, I think one of his, like his aides, walk him to the car because I pick him up every day from school, walk him to the car. And, you know, they give me a little, you know, obviously an update of everything that happened throughout the day, if he had a good day, if he had a little, you know, episode. They let me know all that. And, uh, you know, one day, this one particular day, they was just came to me. It was just like, uh, you know, Anthony does very well with his ABCs. You know, when y'all home, if y'all want to, just work on it because he seems to really be getting it. So I'm looking, I'm like, what? He knows his ABCs. And like, he know him by, by, you know, by seeing it. You know what I mean? Not not just because somebody's, you, you know how you can maybe memorize it, just ABCs. Memorize the song, yeah. 
we know it by visual. So we was pointing, I was pointing stuff on my shirt. He would say the, the letter, and I was like, what? Like, you know what I mean? This is me one day picking him up from school. Like, I didn't even know he, he, he knew this. So I went and told his mom, I'm like, yo, do you know he, da, da, da. She was like, what, for real? I was like, yeah, he was telling me he, you know what I mean, he's doing very well in class, he's doing this and that, da, da. So then she's trying to get him to say the ABCs, and obviously the first letter in the, in the alphabet is A, but then also Anthony starts with A. And then she said when she was about to go to B, he says N. And she's like, N. Like, that's not, that's not after, you know, A. Then she says, he says T, H, O. So she was like, wait, he's spelling his name. And she, she, uh, she so she like, so I was, like, tell him to start over because she was like, I didn't get it. Like, I wanted to tape it. You know what I mean? If she got him to do it, sent the, hit the voice clip, tape him. You know what I mean? Sent that to me, man. And I was just like, wow, man. Like, you know, I think some people, man, in life and just in life in general, man, you know, they tell you something. And you just believe it. You know what I mean? Whatever that thing could be. You may not ever, you know what I mean? People go paralyzed. You ain't going to walk again. Or you ain't going to do this. You ain't going to do that. But if you believe that, I really, really believe that that's, that could be. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying every situation changes. But if you believe, you know what I'm saying? If you really believe and you work at that thing, man, I think a situation could change. And never thought my son would be able to do, would, would do this. Because that's what the doctors told me at first. You know what I mean? But then now I'm saying that this dude is really getting it. He, he's, you know what I mean? He's alert. He's attentive. He wants to learn and he wants to get better. That's why I'm like, yo, my son could talk, man. That was, so that was, that was real, real, real huge, a huge victory for him. And, and, and definitely, definitely super duper emotional for me. Uh, nah, like I said, I can, I can only imagine that feeling. Um, no, like you said, they, they tell you my uncle in 1950 something got part of his brain cut out because he had meningitis. And they told my grandma, like, he probably wouldn't live to be like eight, nine, or something like that. Uncle's 70 something. Mm. So, mm. just because they tell yeah. you these things don't mean like mm. that that's what it is. Uh, right. Faith is a very strong thing uh, in those situations. Uh, I tell people all the time, I'm Muslim, but that's what works for me. And mm -hmm. I don't know how is luck. I rather you believe in something than you just think that the clouds is it or whatever it right, is. That, right. You know, right. people have some far off thoughts. But faith based in those type of situations will keep you grounded, it'll keep you able to go on because like it's the hearing those things when your son is a two year old, that has to be hard. Hearing yeah. those things when he five or they six and then it's still in us they so small still and it's like i can't protect you from that and as a dad knowing that there's something out there that you can't protect your child from it has to mm -hmm. just suck like right, even right. if it's a but first thing they get a cold and you like oh my god my baby right. is sneezing like, you know right right eyes yeah, all man. puffy like, and he, he just out yeah, of yeah like yeah. Or they tease it, and, they, and it's mm. like any of those situations when they first get them, and you be like, "Damn, and I can't do nothing to, I can't do nothing. And I'm helpless in this situation. It sucks." Right. But right. um, before we wrap up this episode, because like I said, this is just part one. Uh, we're gonna get several different parents to give us their uh, damn, it is raining. Um, <laughs> to give us their different <laughs> testimonies in the way that the situation has been for them, because all of them. Ain't a, it ain't a cookie cutter situation. These slices of this cake is all coming out different. Um, right. Any advice that you would give uh, to a parent who is seeing some things, because again, you don't want to feel like it can't happen to me, because it can. Mm -hmm. But anything, any advice that you want to give, any warning signs that you want to give out to whoever's listening? Uh, the main advice I would give um, to, to anybody that's listening with, with, with the same issue it's just obviously you love your kids. Don't lose hope. You know what I mean? Don't think that it, your kid is any different from anybody else. Um, obviously, love on them even the more. You know what I mean? Because I've been told, man, that it's, it's fathers out here that, that run away from situations like this. You know what I mean? That, that, that don't stay in the fold because their kid may have a disability. Um, like I said, uh, on a, on a, on the last episode, when you asked me who who's my biggest influence, and it's my dad, man, because like I said, he, he I grew up with him, he raised me, he was here till I left for college. So one thing he he taught me, man, was family, and I don't care what situation or what disability or what 
whatever my kids is going through or, or in, I'm going to be there for them regardless um, to the very end because I love them that much. So, but again, like I said, any parent that's going through this, you're struggling, uh, listen, you know what I mean? Or everybody's situation is, could be worse or is worse, you know what I mean, than, than your current situation. Some some people have it, have it worse than others, man. But just stick in there, stay, um, believe. Like we said, faith is, is, is very big. And um, never give up. Never give up. Copy that. All right, y'all. Uh, Tone, I appreciate you coming on. We ain't even going to uh, do no crazy uh, outro situation with this one because this isn't really the time and place for none of that. Uh, mm-hmm. Me and Tone, though, will be on the sharing the stage for the Pi Link live show August the 4th. Hit the link in our bio. Get those tickets now. Tone, I appreciate you coming back on, bro. I that appreciate was you for having one. me, man. Thank you. Thank you. No, nah, that's that's episode 145, y'all. This is just part one. Somewhere down the road, we will have part two. We are. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>